All right, this is jailbreak. And I'm taking a look at this construct here of louvers in a frame. And as you can see, it looks like each louver takes one voxel space and they're stacked one on top of each other. But let's explore how this is done. Since we know that there's more to the story because there's gaps between these louvers. And I'll use a 2D voxel planner to show how this is done. Okay, let's take a, a voxel and place it here. This voxel influences all its neighbors. That means that when I create a cross-sectional view of a louver, the neighboring voxels are modified. So if I place something in this location, it has a non-default shape. If I place the next louver right below it, allowing a gap to appear between the, the two louvers, which is what we saw, then we're going to notice that we don't get what we would desire because the spacing between the two louvers is more like one and a half as opposed to one voxel. So how does this effect get done? Well, it involves borrowing the appearance of voxels. The actual frame and, and louvers are going to exist in this third column. We're going to borrow the appearance of this voxel in the second column by shifting it over. Now what this means is that the area of influence does not get transferred to the fourth column. The area of influence stays where the voxel is actually truly is or centered on it anyway. And so what we now have is some additional freedom where we can borrow voxels from the fourth column, the appearance of voxels in the fourth column, and place it in the third column. So I'll take this Now we can get the desired effect of having a louver spaced one voxel apart with air gaps. Now let's take a look um, yeah, so let's take a look from a, at a top from a top point of view. And by the way, the cost of borrowing is that the area influence now for appear for appearance of a bunch of voxels in the third column as the area influence goes from the first column all the way to the fifth column. Okay, so there's going to be issues if you have to uh, somehow place voxels in these locations. But let's continue this discussion with looking at a top view of a voxel, of one of these voxels. So let's go here and what we will do is we will push these voxels down at the same time as we're as we're uh, expanding them side to side. Now why am I doing that? Well because I want to take advantage of the fact that by borrowing the appearance of uh, this voxel and, and to the neighbors that this location here is free to be shaped in any way we want. I can, for example, make a frame that is larger than the voxel to the side. And in this case, since this is a top-down view, the frame is coming out of the screen towards you. Okay. So this is the way we would design a louver to solve our problem. Let's take a look at how this would appear 
in the 3D reactor, which is where we can actually build it. So I'm going to do a control click on this voxel if I get it right, and there it is. Okay. Now the one thing, of course, is that uh, from the top view, we see that this has not been stretched in these directions. So I'll do that first. Okay. Let's stretch this. And I'm going to stretch this. And go to the bottom and repeat. Now, the louvers, of course, in the original frame that we saw, were tilted. So that's easy to accomplish. And let's do that. And furthermore, I'm going to pull it, the louver, back a little bit. Just a little. So the frame can actually just apply, uh, be one voxel wide. Okay, I have to do this on both the front and the back. Now, if you're playing around with the 2D voxel planner, you can do things that um, you know just kind of comes to you from Lark. Uh, it isn't necessary, for example, to just make a louver that's straight across. I can grab this face here, and I can move this down. And now I have a tilted louver. And if you reflect it, you can make a V-shaped louver. Why would you want that? Well, it might be a unique appearance. I'm not sure I've seen a construct using this. So this is an idea that you might want to follow up on. Uh, let's, well, let's explore this one and let's try and see what happens. So this is something new. Okay, um, I'm going to build it and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, I'm putting a lead on. Okay, okay, so the arrows are showing me where to find the voxels I have to copy. So step one, I copy this, move to transfer station two, shift click, that shapes, and grab the green voxel. Undo, and I put it in position one. Step two, down this way, grab it, Put it in transfer position one, station one. Okay, copy, undo, and we're going to reflect that in the Z direction. And press it and place it in there, position two. Step three. Okay, I'm going to copy. Okay. Oh, I just reflect this one, and I place it here. Step four. Come, copy, transfer station, position two. Click, copy, undo, reflect. Step, place four. Step five. Okay, well it says copy reactor position 4, which I already have here, reflect in the Y and Z planes, and place it in position 5. Okay, 6, copy, okay, we gotta grab a new voxel here, copy, reflect on the Y plane, and paste the voxel reactor at position 6. By the... okay. Step 7. Go down here. Copy. Reflect in the Y, Z. Place here. Position 8. Copy the reactor position 1. Okay. So this is the first voxel I placed. Reflect that in the Y and Z planes. And there. And now we just grab our voxel, put it in a nice shiny, and put it at the center pad, and that's a little 
that positioned that's positioned a little bit off. Okay, I made a mistake when I did that. Okay, there it is. I can now grab this voxel. And it is tilted here, and I'm going to rotate it here so we can see it a little clearer. Maybe rotate it the other way. Okay, okay, so it's okay, it's coming in from behind. Mm, okay, so that's our tilted louver. And I'll try and reflect this in the X direction. Okay. Bring that out. Paste it. So that's our V. Now, since this is kind of asymmetric like like this, this is the shape is asymmetric and I'll need to use handles to grab the The, the louvers. Okay. Well, the issue is, is normally I would reflect this in the y direction so that I could stack it, such as this. Okay. But and and I can do that. And uh, what we will see is that it, unfortunately. It has the uh, tilting in the wrong direction. Um, let's see if I can reflect that in a Z, and it's still in the wrong direction. Okay, so the upshot is is that if you want to experiment with uh, uh, louvers uh, of a tilted form, you'll probably have to make two separate copies uh, in order to get that uh, uh, stacked effect one where the handle is behind it and one which is for the handle that's in front. Alright, well that was an interesting experiment. I did that ad hoc, but I think uh, it was interesting. So I hope this has been uh, of interest to you as well. Take care.